What's up, guys? This is Revenge of the Jocks. I'm your host, Marty. And right now, I'm sitting down with the awesome Arian Foster, a.k.a. Bobby Fino. Did you ever watch um, the last uh, the Avatar, the last Airbender cartoon? Nah, that's that's what I think made me love the movie was I, I was winning it blind. Oh, you should watch the cartoon. Yeah, that's what they Way say. Way better than the movie. <clears throat> I think they're doing like a rebranding of that, too. I hate when they do rebrandings of stuff. There's too many people in the world with great ideas, new ideas, for motherfuckers to always make old shit. So, like... I think it's lazy. What, what about the like the Marvel, uh, D, like DC Universe? Lazy. Yeah. Rebranding is like, you know, like taking like, hey Arnold, and they want to make an all new one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think they need to pocket that one. <laughs> hey Arnold was fantastic. Yeah. I think it's more nostalgia than anything else. What's, what did you what did you grow up watching? I mean, I watched that too, but like just like as an adult, like you think cartoons like, are better nowadays. Which cartoons you which cartoons are you into right now? Like the movies nowadays are way better than they were when we were kids. Oh, definitely because of just science, you know. Just. I mean, it's not just necessarily the graphics. I think the the story, the 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 actual story is it, they're they're written better. They're written for adult audiences, but to capture kids' eyes. And so, like, I'm entertained watching that, it. What you just broke down is the whole philosophy behind, like, animated films. Like, the whole right. Pixar philosophy is that <clears throat> the story is for the adults. Mm-hmm. Because the adults have to bring have to. the kids to the yeah. film. Like, if my daughter's not be like, oh, dad, I'm going to see The Incredibles too. Can yeah. I get the keys to the car? Yeah. <laughs> Which know? was bomb. Right? <laughs> so, you and two animated films. Oh, super. Like, so, I'm, what's the top? I'm, what's your top five animated films? Ooh, top five. That's tough. Strictly just on the strength of its cultural impact, uh, Lion King's number one. Anyway. Childish Gambino playing him in a remake, right? Yeah, I mean, we're going to see how that goes. Yeah, are you yeah. a fan of Childish Gambino? Super. Or D- Donald Glover? Super. I compete with a lot of people creatively that don't know I'm competing with them. But there's, like, <laughs> there's a lot of dope people. There's a lot of dope people. There's a lot of people doing some really, really dope shit that's like, man, like, it motivates me. Like, when I watch, like, he dropped that. Say that. that. Competing is a, is a bad uh it's a bad way to look at it. Yeah, not competing. I, I had Terry Crews on my podcast. He said competing is the death of creativity. For me, competing is always, it's not a negative thing. It's right. a great thing. It's like, damn. If I go to, like, I want to go see Secret Life of Pets with my daughter. And in a movie, she's just standing up. She's cracking up. She's laughing out loud. And I'm just like, damn, why is she laughing so hard at this shit? Like, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so I take notes like, okay, this to make people laugh. How they, And I watch the movie strategically to, and to break it down. Like, almost like film. Like, right. I, I watch films to break right. them down. Because I didn't go to school for film. Right. So if I want to write movies, I got to understand them. So when I watch them, like, oh, man, all the kids are laughing at this point. Like, and then I go back and study that part. Right. And sometimes she'd be laughing. I'd be like, oh, shit, I need, I want to make her laugh more than this shit. movie made her laugh. Yeah, that's dope. And but but So what he meant by it was you have to compete for the right reasons, right? If you're competing to, like, better yourself, then that's a plus. But yeah. if you're competing to try to recreate something somebody else made for outside validation. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Then yeah. then you're then then you're actually robbing yourself of your own creative juices. Oh yeah, I agree. I, I yeah. can understand that. Like I'm not I'm not competing for validation. I'm competing to get better at my craft. Yeah, then then it's like then I like it thing. when someone something someone when people <clears throat> make good stuff, like I I appreciate it. So my top five. I gotta yeah, say what's your top five? five? So we gotta go Lion King. Yeah. Ratatouille. Right, Ooh, Ratatouille is so slept on, man. Yeah. I don't know why though. Let me tell you why Ratatouille is in my top five too. This shit is bomb. And bro. the reason I like Ratatouille because his life is like my life, right? Here's the you thing is, he, he, this, here's this rat. <laughs> the rat is the one thing that you wanted out of the kitchen, and he had the biggest dream in the world, which was to become a chef. Right. A rat in the kitchen becoming a chef. A rat cooking. A rat cooking is just like some outlandish shit. Right. But the, his dream is huge. And he over and he became a chef. No, I agree. So for me that makes me feel like he if a him. motherfucking rat can become a chef, you can go out there and do anything you want to do in the world. Right. It didn't inspire me like that, but I <laughs> it, was, it was it was fucking dope though. I think I got to go how to train your dragon too. Okay. You know I don't really like finding Nemo. Why not? He's he's annoying. Who Nemo is? Yeah, it's just annoying. Well, wow, you you know another one that's super annoying was the Good Dinosaur. Oh my god, I, I fucking hated that I movie. Stand that low. Why dinosaur, did the though. Arlo was just a piece of shit? I hate, like I he hate cried it. the whole time. I hate Arlo. And though. it's a poor man's. It's a poor man's Lion King. Yeah, hundred exactly. 100%. It's a poor man's Lion King, and he he does there's no Timon and there's no Pumbaa though, which should carry Lion King. Yeah. He got this. Boy, that's supposed to be like a dog. No, exactly. And I, hey, I'll tell you what, dog. Loki, happy they made that little kid white. Because if they made that little kid black, I'd have been <laughs> hot as a motherfucker. I got, I got Lion King, Ratatouille, Had to Train Dragon. 
Did I have another one? No. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go with um, we're gonna go with Cars Two. Terrible movie. You, I, I, the whole Cars I, franchise the, is trash. For me, I can't understand why people don't like Cars. What I mean, like like. The the cars like when 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 like Mater becomes a spy, it's a dope. But you want to know dope you, story. So you know, with cars coming at the post apocalyptic, uh, po- the post apocalypse in um the Pixar universe. What is that? I don't know what that means. So the Pixar universe. <clears throat> so in the Pixar universe, Wally is Jesus. I know you don't believe in God and shit, but and just to just believe in this for a second. Right. Uh, and the Pixar universe. I'm, I'm good. I love stories. Yeah. So uh, the Bible has great stories. Yes. Was, yeah. They're a little. Yeah. Go ahead, man. <laughs> I believe in a universe. So, um, are you a pantheist? I don't know what that means. I just believe in a universe and a higher being. So, Wally is Jesus. So, what? what happens in this Pixar theory is that the little girl from Monsters Inc. Boo, right, is actually the witch in Brave. So, Brave is the beginning of the because she's going through doors. If you watch her, she's going through the drawer. What happens is she went back in time looking for Sully. But she couldn't find something. Is this one of those YouTube conspiracy theory? Like, yeah, my friend John Negroni came up with this shit. Okay, go ahead. I'm listening. All right, so Wally's Jesus. You know what? That's my five. Wally. Yeah, Wally. Okay. Wally was fucking the goat. I, think, I love that nigga. Yeah. <laughs> I love that nigga. Bro. Why? I mean, Wally and Eve. You know that shit was cool. Eve. So Eve is so the first two people. Eva. They're both on Earth. Eva. So it's like Adam and Eve type thing. Okay. Right? In that movie. But, but by this time... But why, why would Wiley be Jesus if he's Adam? But I'm just saying, I'm just saying, that whole idea of it, whatever. So I'm just saying, so, so Wiley's Jesus. Let me tell you why Wiley's Jesus. So why... Okay, not because he was the first man on Earth. Every No. <clears throat> Jesus wasn't the first man on Earth. I mean, that whole story there, <laughs> if you're looking for any kind of logic, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna be looking for a lighter. <laughs> Okay, Wally's Wally's Jesus. Oh yeah, so basically what happens is so everyone died. There's no one left on Earth th- based on all the movies. So cars that came through pollution. So the humans that were put in by B- by B and L, which is by and large, just like right. the Walmart or the Pixar universe. They own everything. They do everything. We're more like Amazon. Let's say Amazon because Walmart is competing with Amazon, but we know Amazon is winning that race. Nigga, Jesus. Oh yeah, so yeah, so you get to the <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so my Amazon. Is- so all the humans are fat. They depend on the machines. True. The machine took them off the planet because they couldn't live there no more. Right. But they need the they needed contact with people to exist. Like so, the idea is in Monster Inc. They were going back in time to get the energy to live in the future because they cannot live without the imagination of the kids. Which is far we learned that the toys in Toy Story that they depend on the imagination of Andy for them to exist and be have their life. Toy Story three was great. Is that the one when they're going down the infirmary? I cried uh, in that movie. When they're about to die, all oh, burn. Shit. I, I I didn't cry, but it was like, you know, you get that little lump in your throat. Like, when I don't get that. I just go all the way in and cry. No, I mean, I, I, I didn't, it didn't push me over there. Just, okay. I, I didn't stop it. It just was what it was. But like, when them niggas was going down and, and, and they, were about to, they were about to get burnt. Yeah. And the niggas was like fighting, fighting. And then finally, the niggas looked at each other and said, let's die together. Ooh, that was cool. Yeah. That was going, cold. That shit, I mean. I that, felt that shit. But anyway, so Wally saves the people. They come back down. There's where everyone's there, and it's because of Wally. Wally saves the people. They pay for his sins, and Wally was the guy to do it. Wally's Jesus. Okay, so my top five movies <laughs> of all time of animated films is right. No order. Ratatouille, Coraline, Despicable Me, one and two. The third was trash and means is wow. fucking trash. It was not trash. The third one when he found his brother. That shit was dope. It's trash. It, was cool. it was cool. It wasn't better than one or two, but it was cool. Yeah, but I'm talking about it's not even in my top twenty. Despicable Me, Wreck It Ralph. Wreck It Ralph. I forgot about Wreck It Ralph, dog. I know. That's why I think your list was. I didn't give you. I'm I mean, get you think you put me on the spot? I had no idea. You 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 make digital animation, so like nigga, this is you yes. no. Yeah. So yeah. So Despicable Me, Wreck It, Wreck It Ralph, because Wreck It was a bad dude, but he wanted to do good. You know, I, I think. Wreck It Ralph was probably one of the only movies in general, in my opinion, that the twist I did not see coming. I was like, yo. Yeah. I remember watching it the first time, I'm like, I never really did that. <gasps> Nigga. And then Shrek. Yeah, Shrek was, Shrek was a little. Shrek was so Shrek fucking was, funny. You know what we need, though, is uh, a black dominated. Did or Pixar's or some kind of animated film that's not Princess and the Frog because Princess and the Frog was probably one of the worst Disney movies ever made. 
I mean, I like the fact there was a black princess, but the, she was a frog for ninety eight percent of the movie. But it was still, but th- it was a bad movie though. But that's because they ain't put no money into I it. I agree. Because think about it, when it came, Princess <clears throat> and the Frog came out. It was, it was the only strictly Disney strictly affirmative action. And it was yeah, it was like <laughs> in three theaters. It showed in New Orleans and it showed in like New York, and yeah. then it didn't hit all the theaters around the no, world. But, but like, there's no, there's there's never been like a star, st- like like uh, a universe where it's. That's why that's black black. That's where I come in at. I mean, we waiting on you, dog. Yeah, I'm working every single day. We, wait, we waiting on you. Yeah, I'm trying to give y'all that universe that everyone wants. Yeah. Well, I I appreciate having a black princess because my daughter loves it. But the craziest thing is, you know, they ain't put no money into it because you cannot find any type of Tiana toy gift for anywhere around the world. That's true. I mean, the fact that it, they came out with a hand drawn cartoon in the age of, of CG of CF CGI. So it's like. Mm-hmm. How does it? How can you even justify that shit? And then, did you read they had changed they, in the new record, Ralph? They had a modified the way that she looked, so she was like lighter. Her nose were more was more thin, and the whole world went in uproar. But they changed her back for her to look black again, like she used to look. Yeah, they, 100%. you know what I'm saying? Like they maybe they thought, oh, we could slide this by, but we only have one black princess. We gonna <laughs> nah, you change? Nigga. Yeah, put the nose back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why is her nose pointed? Her nose need to be flat and wide as fuck. Like they. There is not a black nose, and y'all right. know it, Disney. Who drew this shit? <laughs> and why her complexion? She bleached herself. Yeah, she's like Michael Jackson, the yeah. King. You like Michael Jackson? What? Yeah, of course. So those are my top five movies, though. <clears throat> not the. You know. that's, that's, those are nice. It's a nice five. If you if you think about the cartoons we had when we grew up, were they great cartoons or were they just there? They were just there. Dog. Some there of them was, are great, though. Nah. Go go watch old cartoons. I do watch the, them all the, the time. It's nostalgia. No, I don't watch them for they're that. Not, they're not. They're not. The, the scripts aren't great. Cartoons back in the day, they touched on more elements of life than cartoons. Most cartoons these days are just slapstick humor. I think that's what they were back then. I'm talking ninety cartoons. So like Kim Possible, Bonkers, Tailspin, Rescue Rangers, um, Goof Troop. Doug, Goof Troops. Yeah, um, those were. Like go watch them. They're they're not like Ducktales. They're they're not intellectually stimulating. Hey Arnold was how because it, like the lessons of life that Arnold had to go through and learn. Where his parents not there, with his grandparents, and even like with Helga Pataki and all the people in the movie. Is, I mean, the show. There's been a bully in every kid cartoon: Rugrats, Bobby's World. I don't do bully. I don't do bully stories. So we used to be entertained by radio. Which people like now, podcasts mm-hmm. are big. It's similar to being mm-hmm. entertained by radio. But then this awesome device came along called the television. Mm-hmm. So people started being entertained mm-hmm. by the television. Right. So And then from the television, we got pushed into smartphones. Mm-hmm. So all the entertainment is on a smartphone now. Mm-hmm. What that does to creativity, it dampens creativity a lot. Because your imagination used to be bigger when you listen to radio because you had to imagine things for entertainment. You see it in your own mind. Then you go to visual and they have the images there so you don't imagine it as much. But it could still push you to be creative but not the same way. And then you get to today, we got the phone. So it's just like well, every TV is just... For consumers. Yeah, so what TV, what TV did to radio, mobile devices are going to do to TV. I agree. So, But I would argue that... It's not necessary. It dampens the create or the imagination of the consumer. The consumer, but, but not the creator. It actually makes you be. It forces you to be more creative as a creator. How long have you been making music? Since I was young, man, probably like ten. This is the first like collective. Like, all right, let me put a project together with like real instrumentation and real how I kind of wanted it to go. Yeah. How do how do you, how do you feel about it? I feel great, man. We got over 2 million streams. It's it's dope, man. I think the reception has been has been good. But more than anything, people that actually do music for a living like and are well established like Ninth Wonder, like cats like Hip Boy, like like they, they have reached out to me and be like, "Yo, this is I fuck with this." And so that's, 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 tight, man. that's validation for me. Yeah. But you read, don't you? I do read. <laughs> <laughs> My whole thing is like, I meet all these kids who want to be writers, whether it's films, whether whatever, but none of them want to read. Yeah. How can you be a writer that doesn't read? I, the, my issue is I don't have enough time to read everything I want to read. It's a, it's kind of annoying, actually. Yeah. I hate sleeping. I like I like sleeping, but it's like it's such a waste of time. I don't. I'm the same way. I don't like to sleep because when I sleep, I don't get to do what I love. Yeah, you just, you just it's a waste of time. Yeah. Whoever, that's why another reason why I don't believe in a divine mix is like we have so much things. It's just a waste of time. Like why why design things that sleep? I like your music because you're like one of those artists that I really enjoy that could actually put words together, mm. you know, and 
the the rhythm and the pace and the and all that you know the pentameters and all those things when you rap your delivery is really cold and i feel like your music is like like when i listen to lupe or i listen to um guys who could actually rap you know what i'm saying yeah, like I'm right you know what i'm saying like nah, you got so bars right. you know what i'm saying like listen, a lot of these niggas i don't i don't know what they be saying but some yeah. of niggas just sound cool yeah like, like this nigga sounds cool as shit like yeah. young thugs sound cool as shit on love, everything he's I on i love young thug. me too i don't think he's like a writer but i love young thug he's great with his, his voice affliction he's and using his voice as an instrument 100%. and i i love young 100%. thug but have, when i really sit down and i listen to what he's saying i'm like wait what i have a, I have, a I have a song called suicide note yes and in that and in that song i i, I say uh talking about writing is i need it more than i love it the freedom of it I covet but when it's gone I get sick to my stomach so that's a real thing like so a lot of a lot of people I don't know why a lot of people do music but I do music because it's an extension of myself and like the things that I say is something that I'm feeling and it helps me just sort my thoughts out and, it, and it's, it's everybody has a, a creative outlet or an yeah. outlet and you need that and that's mine and so it's I'll, I'll make music whether nobody listens to it or not and I did for years so yeah. it's like it's it's a part of me so it helps me and I need it. Like I need to make music. Yeah. This is a part of like I, I'll I'll sit up. I always tell people. I always tell kids like whatever you doing, where you look up and it's two three in the morning. And you're like, oh shit, I ain't ate yet. That's what you need. To That's do. how I am with creativity. <clears throat> like I don't really have a. Uh... Like I think there's a difference between an artistry, like an artist. Mm-hmm. So like your artist, your art, your art is writing music, mm-hmm. right? So that's like your that's what you need to do. Right. Otherwise, <laughs> you'll feel sick. So that makes you an artist. I right. feel like as a creative, you don't have, have an artistry. Mm. So like I don't have an artistry. So like I work in as many facets as possible right. to get the creative idea out. Yeah. Right. So it does. I'm like I'm not a writer, but you know sometimes I have to do that. I don't do right. applications, but this may be the best vehicle right. to get this story. More right. of a storytelling and find the right, right vehicle. So sometimes I like to make music just because of that. Like some stories yeah. I have to tell can only be told through a right. song. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I like, think it, I think you just like right, creating. I, I, you can tell creative people because they they have that. They're just like okay, I I want to I want to I, I just want to create there's like music that's like in your face right right and it's like god damn this nigga like well, I, I have to listen to it like you know what I'm saying? Right. it's in my face like right. it's braggadocious it's in your face and then like my music is it's like a soundtrack to your life mm. right so you could just continue to play doing what you're doing and my music is just going to guide that like i make music yeah. for like the perfect setting for my music is brunch you know i i feel like my music is background music <laughs> 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 the artists that I draw from, yeah, like it's the, the it's the exact opposite mindset. So it's like you want as an artist, like I want you to take in every single word I say and understand it was placed there for a reason. And yeah, you can you can really get something out of this. And you're just, and you you make music for like now nah, just put it on the background, dog, and do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, because my music is for. I like the people to be able to. I don't like when music is intrusive. That's that's the thing about marriage. It's like, yo, why, why, why does the government need to be involved in my relationship? The government's involved in every other part of your life. Why? That well, that's, that's that's what I'm saying is is that I'm a Republican in that sense. Was I need small government in my life? No disrespect to the Houstonians out there, but it's like if you want to do the things that you're doing, and I'm doing. This is the place to be. That's the same this thing. When I was a kid, yeah. when I grew up, like I felt like I was deprived of the artistry right. that I could have been enhanced as. A, I was, I was tell people I may not have even played sports yeah. if I could have been introduced to film same. or animation from a young age. Because I I love that more Same. than I ever loved playing the game. Yep. And this is if you, you know, people always tell me cuz like I'm I'm out I'm in LA like every other month like all yeah. like two weeks at a time and it's like you have to be present to win. You have to be here. If you yeah. want, if you want to put a dent in this game, you got to be here. You got to be where you want to be found. Mm-hmm. People don't appreciate like my it. my bars when I rap too sometimes. <clears throat> they miss them. Well, give me one. Okay. Shooting for the stars with my rifle, I'm a sniper. No snakes in my yard, just a black Dodge Viper. Zoom, zoom to the moon, just to go moonwalking. Only understand money, why is you talking? Kill them with words, it's revenge of the nerds. I'm in my own lane, but sometimes I hit the curb. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I like it. They still making Dodge Vipers? No, but there was one in my yard when I was writing it. Just so. <laughs> I think I made the greatest music video and music song an athlete has ever created for the simple fact of Second me. best. No, it's uh, my, be- I got the best. No, it's the best one. I'm Your serious. shit was good. No, no, no. It's it's because it, it details <laughs> it details the relationship between 
uh, player and fan in a, in a oh, way. Oh, that song was dope. In a way, yeah, in a way that hasn't been done before. It's hard to do visuals because you're already trying to like shift the perception of you. Yeah. I don't like taking pictures. Yeah. Like anytime I ever had a photo shoot for, for anybody, like I fucking hated that shit. Yeah. Like, with a passion. It's just not me. I don't like it. So like sitting in front of a camera doing this shit here. Acting, yeah. Style. So it's like anything I do, it's going to be super creative and like Because your video was uh, animated, animated. Yeah. The first one was animated and I did another one that, that had stop motion. Yeah. So there's three verses on it and the song's called A Friend, A Fan, A Kid. And the first one is, uh, it's, it's a friend. And so it's yeah. like, it's like an accumulation of, all my friends and and like relationships that went sour because of their expectations on me because and, and you had now made it to the yeah. league so and so and so it's it's told through their perspective so they're yeah. talking to me so yeah. the whole song it's, it's almost like stan yeah same thing yeah so 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 the friends talking to me the fan is talking to me and a kid it's a friend yeah. and a kid and my my child is talking to me yeah. and so it's all through their perspective talking to me yeah. and it's and it's just a really dope um picture that i painted i did a song like that but it's a player's relationship with the nfl it's called do it really on my last um, tape called polka dots when you get to the when guys get to the league they don't do anything to grow their minds that's true so they beating it up all the time but they're not writing they're not reading that's the majority true. of the locker room you know how it is yeah. like they're not forward thinking of better themselves like i ain't like true. school I yeah. majored in eligibility. Right? Like, what the fuck? You want me to? You want oh, me to keep? Like you want right, me to pick tell up? people? What are you in school for? The NFL. So, yeah. Like, what the fuck I'm you think ma- I come here like majoring in the league? Yeah. Like, no, we're gonna go to class today. <laughs> so do you think about that same mentality? A lot of these guys are top athletes, never the top students. You know what I'm saying? Right. They get pushed along through school for their athletic ability, and then you expect them to go have appetite for of knowledge once they're out of the league. I mean, it's, or it's, during while they're in the no, league. No, I, I I agree, but I I just don't know enough about neuroscience to say that you can actually rewire your brain with reading or or, or slow down the process of of the deterioration of of your brain. I, I don't know enough. About it's like it. any muscle, I think, though, because but it's if not you a don't, muscle. I mean, it's an organ. I mean, organ. I guess organs are different. They're definitely are different. Than muscles. Organs <laughs> are different from pianos. I love. Pac, right? So he's my favorite rapper yeah. of all time. Do I think he's the greatest of all time? No, but he's my favorite. Yeah. Right? So I th- who I think the greatest of all time is Jay-Z. I think he's the greatest Why is that? writer of all time. A couple of different reasons. I think his self-awareness through his experience yeah. is unlike anybody I've seen in rap before. I think that's because, I think that's because <laughs> he never built a brand that wasn't true to himself. Well, no, no. I'm, I'm so I, I would agree, but what I'm saying is in his lyrics, he he was able to kind of narrate his life in a way that that was so detailed and so accurate and so self aware that it made you really walk in his shoes. I thought I lost ninety two bricks like that. He's just dope. <laughs> Every time I look at the game right now, I just be like, man, how was I doing that? I'm so not. And even in that headspace, like I'm, I'm happy as shit to be on this side, though. Bro, I'm like this is like everyone's like, man, you make retirement look so great. I'm like retirement. First of all, I don't like calling it retirement because that just sounds like death. Like when people retire, I view people dying. Jesus, it's moving on. Like we moved on. Like we did that, and then it's we moved. Were you retired though? I don't know. I just moved on. Do you <laughs> regret any of your moves? Have you ever done? Have you ever done some shitty ass shit? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like scumbag um, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when so I was married, and I mean the whole time, the whole time it was scumbag shit. But <laughs> what, what pushed it over the top was I had a, I had a, I had another child out of wedlock, and that was that was that was when I was like, ah, eh, I right. <laughs> I'm a terrible human being. Maybe I should <laughs> maybe I should reevaluate my priorities. Right? Uh, shit. Nah, I robbed a crackhead one time. You robbed a crackhead. Yeah. Did nigga life already? That's that's worse than me, <laughs> nigga. I was just following desires. You was you was out here. Well, it was crazy because me like it was prom, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the night before prom, I found out everybody was going to Slitterbon. Slitterbon is Which a water is, park for people. That yeah, know. the greatest water park in the world. I don't know. About I don't that. know about that. But the time living in Texas, it was. Yeah. So everyone's going to everyone's going to um, Slitterbon, right? And I couldn't afford to go. So I'm like, shit, everybody want to go to Slitterbone without me at the prom? That shit just want to be lame. So I'm like, shit, I need to go get some bread. 
So what I do is like the homie had a car and I was like, hey man, I just need to go rob some crackheads. I get out the and car. And then you beat him up. Yeah. So I get out the car and I'm like, what you need? Oh my God. And he was like, I just need, what is it? And I understand what he said. So I was like, you got the bread? I said, you got the bread or whatever? He's like, I got it. I was like, where is that? So when he showed it to me, it's like, all right. So I punched him. <laughs> Boom. How much was it, dog? It was twenty. You were out to crack every twenty. So I punched him, but the thing was, yeah, I, you gotta, he had the hardest. Along. He had the hardest head that I ever seen it's in my a life. Crack head. This is an awful story, dog. <laughs> I'm just stop telling it then. Well, anyway, continue. I had to step on his hand. <laughs> <laughs> By that time, it was pretty much drenched in crackhead sweat. <laughs> so. <laughs> So I get the 20, and then, you know what I'm saying? Did you and ring it out? Well, he was screaming. Yeah, he was screaming. And I was like, nobody cares about you. You're a crackhead. <laughs> You're a crackhead. You're going to go to jail. Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 17. It was the dumbest shit ever. That was stupid. You should take a poll. What's, what's worse? What's the worst moral act? Mine or yours? Robbing a crackhead or having an illegitimate job? How's that even a story? How's that even a possibility? Well, which one's worse to you? The baby out of wedlock. That's crazy. I brought life into this world. And I saved the life. Yeah, how'd you save this nigga? He this didn't nigga get a crack be... for the night. One of my favorite quotes of all time is, he who wears his dirt the best is the healthiest. What that means is, is like owning the things that you've done and who you are is the, it's the way you can be in the most healthy mental space, right? So it's, it's really, your, it's, your, it's yourself taking account. Of, not being proud of shit like that, but yeah. like, that's who I was, that's what I did. Oh, definitely. It's like, I, like, I'm not proud of what I did. You know, the yeah, shit some I've people, done in my instead life. of just, yeah. Yeah, but, but if you hide from it trying to, and trying to portray this image that you're not, like, it's just put you in this forever, you, you're trying to chase this perfect, per- perfect shadow and, and you're, you're going to fail. So like, oh, own, yeah. own your mistakes. If you beat up crackheads, you beat up crackheads. <laughs> A lot of people don't like to be alone with themselves. 100%. Like, they don't want to get to know who they are. Yep. Like, they don't want to get to know themselves. They don't want to spend time with themselves because spending yeah. time with yourself, you have to deal with all the fucked up <clears throat> shit about yourself. You have to like you. And when you, f- when you find out you've done some shit that you don't like, it's tough. Yeah, but It's like, hard to swallow. But you got to deal with that shit. But people don't. Yeah. Yeah. So do you fall out? Can you fall out of love with yourself? I think we're filled with society that doesn't love themselves. Why do you think that? Because they, I, I don't think we're taught to. I don't think we're taught emotional te- intelligence. I think it's just something that either you are born with or you or you learn. And we don't value uh, emotional health. We have, we value monetary gain in this country. How many times, like, have you been in a, in, a, in an altercation with somebody or a conflict, and they read you wrong? And you're and it's frustrating and, and, and you feel like you're being read wrong and, and they're being read wrong and it's just this ninety ninety eight percent of conflict is, is because of miscommunication. So if we're if we're, so if we're cognizant, if we're aware of our emotions and how to communicate with each other, most of the conflict in your life can be dissipated. Yeah, but we women are usually more have a higher emotional IQ. A thousand percent. Right? And men usually don't. Mm-hmm. But I always tell people it starts from my childhood. Mm-hmm. Like as a man, when you're as a kid, as a boy, like say if you fall down, mm-hmm. don't cry. Get up. Mm-hmm. You don't need to cry. What are you crying for? Wipe mm-hmm. yourself off. Yeah. Girl falls down. Hey, baby, what happened? You okay? Mm-hmm. Oh, daddy, I scraped my knee. Mm-hmm. You be like, does it hurt? Yeah, it hurts. So it's like, how do you mm-hmm. cater to your young men in the world the same too, <laughs> for them to express themselves? I, I've, I've caught myself doing that, actually, because I got, I got two sons. And um, one of them, he was over at my house, and he said, I miss my mommy. And uh, he was crying. And my first reaction was like, what's well, she not here? Don't cry. But then I was like, well, tell me about it. What, what, why are you yeah. sad? She's like, well, I miss the way she hugs me, and I miss the way I was like, okay, well. Did she you do the Chris home. Tucker? Did he hug you like this? <laughs> <Did> <laughs> or she, was it more like this? <laughs> did she hug you like this? <laughs> did she make your peanut butter sandwich like this? <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah. I, had to, I, had to, I had to cater to his feelings, and it, it's, it's a, it was a learning experience for me because it, it made me lower my ego and, and understand that the majority of the issues that I had in my life stemmed from me not being emotionally aware of why why I was so angry. I did a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. I, I didn't necessarily rob crackheads, but I did a lot of stupid shit. I, in in so when I was in the league, I, I was I was a heavy drinker just because I wasn't happy. Like I was I was living a marriage. I was in a marriage. I wasn't. I didn't want to be in. I was dealing with a whole bunch of family issues, and it's just like I, I was. It was an accumulation of a lot of really bad time in my life, and so. So how often were you drinking when you was playing? A lot. Like I was drinking. 
every week for sure, but uh, it was just it was just heavy drinking. Like yeah. that's why I learned where that quote from was like, "He who wears his dirt the best is the healthiest." I used to hide all that shit. I used to hide my past. I used to hide everything because I was ashamed of and a how lot people of are gonna judge you. Yeah, and feel, I, you, yeah, you're just ashamed, and you're trying to fulfill this 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 role in your head that you invented for yourself. Yeah, and so when, when all of that shit, it, it all came crashing down when I had the child out of wedlock. But when that when that happened, it was like this burden that, that lifted off of me because, okay, I'm not perfect anymore. Yeah. And so then I was like, this is who I am. And you then do, do you and feel like is, that's how Tiger felt? Nah. <laughs> nah. I think he's still, he's still trying to put up, put on. <laughs> once I accepted the fact that I honestly and truly don't care what other people think about me. I know people say that a lot. Yeah. But we all kind of still put up this like facade. But like once you really genuinely feel that, it's like a it's a cape. Yeah, I'm just I'm the same way. Yeah. Like people be telling me stuff, I'll just be like, That's what's up. And I'm supposed to care like that's a, that's because, a dope like, you like have. people be like, Oh, I used to respect you. I'll be like, bro, that's I ha- I don't even know you. Yeah. And I didn't even know that you respected me. So the <laughs> fact that you know, like I don't even know you existed. I lost nothing. Yeah, I lost nothing because I never had it. Like right. I never thought that like, oh, the right. whole world respects me as a human being. Like and, and another thing that's kinda like egotistical of of people in general is is it's just like that when people say, "Oh, I lost respect for you." I'm like, "Well, that's what's up." Like it used to, it used to be like, "Well, what, what happened?" But it's, I, I don't understand. Oh, I do, I do actually. But now I don't. Is if you expect there's seven billion people in this world, if you expect every single one to agree with what you have to say, to like you, to want to be around you, you're a fucking egotistical maniac. Yeah, but there's more, I think sometimes, so for some reason, like if you scroll, like say you tweet something, you scroll through the <clears> tweets, <throat> there'll be thousands of positive things, but yeah. the, the the negative one is always sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah, and I think that's because there's so much positive in mm. the world, that's easier to see the negative when it comes at you. This is actually a person who I don't, necessarily agree with a lot but he had a great quote his name's thomas soul he's like a he's like a really conservative black thinker um but he said something that's fucking brilliant he said uh it it actually takes a consider considerable a considerable amount of uh knowledge to understand the extent of your ignorance